Ready to dive into some more phrasal verbs, Sarah? Yes, I'm all set, Mr. Davis. What's on the agenda today? First up, we have fall apart. Imagine you're on a distant planet and you've built a robot friend. However, over time, the robot starts to malfunction and literally falls apart into pieces. So, fall apart means to break into pieces because of being in a poor condition. It can also mean when someone feels like they can't cope with their problems anymore. That's a bit sad for the robot. So, if I'm really stressed and feel overwhelmed, I could say I'm falling apart? Exactly, Sarah. It's important to talk about our feelings before we reach that point. Next, we have get along. Picture two alien species meeting for the first time. Instead of fighting, they find they like each other and get along well. Get along means to have a good relationship with someone. Like how I get along with my best friend. We hardly ever fight. Right you are. Now, let's explore hold on. Imagine you're on a spaceship traveling through a wormhole. It's a bumpy ride, so the captain says, hold on, meaning grab something stable or wait a moment. Hold on can be used both physically, like holding on to something to avoid falling, and metaphorically, like waiting or pausing for a short time. Hold on, that's like when my mom tells me to wait a moment when I'm asking too many questions at once. You've got it. Lastly, we have kickback. Imagine after a long day of exploring new planets, you return to your spaceship to relax. You put your feet up and just kick back, meaning to relax and take it easy. Oh, kicking back sounds great after finishing all my homework. Just relaxing and maybe reading my favorite book. Perfect example, Sarah. You've done an excellent job understanding these phrasal verbs. Remember, the key to mastering them is to use them in your everyday conversations. Thanks, Mr. Davis. These stories really help me remember. I'll try using them when talking to my friends and family. That's the spirit, Sarah. I'm sure you'll be a phrasal verb pro in no time. Keep practicing and don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. Ready for more adventures in our next lesson? Definitely. Thanks for making learning so exciting, Mr. Davis. See you next time. You're welcome, Sarah. Keep up the great work, and yes, I'll see you in our next linguistic adventure. Hey, how's it going? I heard your bike fell apart during the weekend ride. Everything okay? Oh, it was a disaster. The chain broke, and then the brakes just gave up. I had to hold on for dear life and finally kicked back my bike to the repair shop. Yikes. That sounds terrifying. I hope you're okay. Did they manage to fix it? Yeah, thankfully. They patched it up, and it's good as new now. I was worried I'd have to get a new bike altogether. Well, I'm glad it worked out. On a brighter note, how are things with your new roommate? Do you two get along? Surprisingly well. I was a bit worried at first, but we found common interests, and we've been getting along just fine. We even kicked back with some pizza last night and chatted for hours. That's great to hear. It's always nice when you can get along with your roommates. Speaking of which, I've been meaning to ask you about your weekend plans. Anything exciting coming up? Not really. I might just kick back and relax at home. It's been a hectic week, and I could use some downtime. That sounds like a plan. Sometimes, it's essential to just kick back and recharge. Do you have any specific relaxation activities in mind? I'm thinking of catching up on my reading. I've got this book I've been holding on to for weeks, and I've been meaning to dive into it. Nice. A good book can be the perfect way to kick back and unwind. What's the title? It's a mystery novel. I love trying to solve the puzzles along with the characters. It helps me take my mind off things. Sounds like a great way to spend the weekend. I might kick back with a movie marathon myself. Any recommendations? How about some classic comedies? They always help me relax and kick back after a long week. That's a good idea. 
I'll browse through my collection and find some laughs. Well, whatever you decide to do, make sure to enjoy your weekend and get some well-deserved rest. You too. Let's catch up next week and share our weekend stories. Let's continue our adventure with a new set of phrasal verbs, Sarah. Are you ready? Absolutely, Mr. Davis. What are we learning today? Our first phrasal verb for today is look after. Imagine you're on a mission in a galaxy far away and you have a pet space creature. To ensure it's well and happy, you need to look after it, meaning to take care of or be responsible for someone or something. So if I'm looking after my little brother, I'm taking care of him. Got it. Exactly. Next, we have make up. Think of two friends in a futuristic city who had an argument but then decided to reconcile. They talk it out and make up, meaning they resolve their differences and restore their friendship. Make up can also mean to invent a story or an excuse. Like when I make up a story for my creative writing class or if friends stop being mad at each other. Spot on, Sarah. Now let's move on to pass out. Imagine you're on a desert planet exploring under the blazing sun, and it's extremely hot. You haven't had water for hours, and suddenly you feel dizzy and then pass out, meaning to lose consciousness or faint. That sounds scary. I'll remember to stay hydrated. Pass out because of the heat. Got it. Good thinking. Lastly, we have put up with. Imagine you're on a space station with a roommate who snores like a freight train. It's annoying, but you decide to tolerate it. To put up with something means to endure or tolerate a difficult or unpleasant situation or person. So, if I put up with my friend's bad singing, it means I tolerate it because she's my friend. I understand now. You've got it, Sarah. Your understanding of these phrasal verbs is impressive. They can add so much nuance to our conversations and help us express ourselves more clearly. Thanks, Mr. Davis. These examples really help. I can't wait to use them in real life. And I'm sure you'll use them brilliantly, Sarah. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep experimenting with these phrasal verbs in your conversations, and you'll master them in no time. I will, Mr. Davis. Thanks for making English so fun and interesting. See you in our next lesson. You're welcome, Sarah. I'm looking forward to it as well. Keep up the great work and see you next time for more exciting explorations into the world of English. Hi there. How was your day? It was okay, just a bit hectic. I had to look after my niece for a few hours. She's so energetic. It's like trying to keep up with a tornado. Wow, that sounds like a handful. How did you manage to make up activities to keep her entertained? Well, we made up a little game where we pretended to be pirates on a treasure hunt. It turned out to be quite fun, and it kept her occupied. That's creative. I bet she loved it. By the way, have you heard about the new colleague we're getting next week? No, I haven't. What's the scoop? Apparently, he's a bit difficult to put up with. Some say he can be quite demanding, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Oh, great. Just what we need, another challenging colleague. Well, I hope we can all get along despite any differences. Agreed. We'll have to find a way to put up with each other and work as a team. Are you feeling okay? You look a bit pale. I don't know. I suddenly feel lightheaded. I might pass out. Oh no. Let's get you to a chair. I'll grab some water. Thanks. I don't know what happened. Maybe I just need a moment to relax. Take your time. If you need anything, just let me know. 
I'm here to look after you. I appreciate that. Maybe I just need a snack or something. Good idea. I'll make up a quick snack for you. How about some crackers and cheese? Sounds perfect. Thanks for taking care of me. I guess we all have our moments. Absolutely. It's important to look after each other, especially when things get tough. Fantastic progress, Sarah. Ready for another set of phrasal verbs? Always ready, Mr. Davis. What are we learning today? Let's start with run out of. Picture you're on a space mission to Mars and you've brought a limited supply of water. Halfway there, you realize you've run out of water, meaning you've used all of it and there's none left. Oh no, that would be a big problem in space. So if I eat all my snacks, I've run out of snacks? Exactly, Sarah. Now let's talk about set up. Imagine you're a pioneer on a new planet and you need to create a place to live. You set up a habitat, which means you're arranging or building something so it's ready for use. Got it. Like setting up my desk for homework. Right on. Next, we have take after. Suppose there's a family of astronauts. You take after your parents because you also want to explore space, meaning you resemble them in appearance or behavior. So, if people say I take after my mom because we're both curious, that's what it means. Precisely. Lastly, turn down. Imagine you're invited to join a mission to a black hole. However, you think it's too dangerous, so you turn down the offer, meaning you refuse or decline it. Like turning down an extra helping of veggies. I understand. You've got it, Sarah. With each lesson, you're getting better at understanding and using phrasal verbs. How do you feel about them now? Much more confident, Mr. Davis. These examples really help. I'm starting to spot phrasal verbs everywhere. That's fantastic to hear. Phrasal verbs are a big part of English, and mastering them will make you an even stronger communicator. Keep up the great work, Sarah. I will, Mr. Davis. Thanks for making learning so fun. Can't wait for our next lesson. My pleasure, Sarah. Looking forward to it as well. Keep practicing and see you next time for more adventures in English. Hey, have you seen my favorite mug? I was going to make coffee, but it looks like I've run out of clean ones. Oh, sorry. I set up the dishwasher earlier, and I didn't realize you were planning to use that mug. I'll wash it for you. No worries. By the way, did you talk to your brother about helping us set up the new TV? I have no idea where to start. Yeah, I did. He said he'd swing by this weekend to help us set it up. He's pretty good with tech stuff. Awesome. I'm looking forward to having a movie night with the new setup. Speaking of family, do you think our son takes after you or me more? It's hard to say. He has your eyes, but he seems to take after me in terms of his love for reading. Maybe he's a good mix of both of us. That's true. He does love story time, just like you. By the way, did you turn down the offer to join the neighborhood book club? I heard they meet every Friday. Yeah, I did. I wanted to focus on some personal projects, and I didn't want to commit to anything right now but I might reconsider in the future. Fair enough. It's good to have some flexibility. Speaking of which, we should make a grocery list. I realize we've run out of a lot of essentials. True. Let's sit down and make a list so we can pick everything up on our way home from work tomorrow. We should make sure to grab some extra coffee too. I hate running out of it, especially on busy mornings. Definitely. I'll add that to the list. Oh, and we're running out of time to plan our anniversary celebration. Any ideas? How about we set up a cozy dinner at that Italian restaurant we both like? We can reserve a table for two and enjoy a quiet evening together. 
Sounds perfect. Let me call and set up the reservation. And for a gift, how about we take a weekend trip to the mountains? It could be a nice change of scenery. That's a fantastic idea. Let's turn it into a tradition, a mountain getaway every year for our anniversary. I love that. It's a tradition we can both look forward to. And maybe we can take our son along when he's a bit older. Agreed. It's important to create memories as a family. By the way, did you turn down that job offer you were considering? Yeah, I did. After some thought, I realized it wasn't the right fit for me at the moment. I want to focus on our family and the projects I'm passionate about. I support your decision. Family comes first. And hey, maybe with your free time, we can set up a small garden in the backyard. I've always wanted fresh herbs. That sounds like a lovely idea. We can turn our backyard into a little oasis. Let's make a plan for that, too. Ready for our next phrasal verb adventure, Sarah? Yes, Mr. Davis. I'm excited to learn more. Wonderful. Let's begin with work out. Imagine you and your friends are trying to solve a complex puzzle on an alien planet. After trying different solutions, you finally solve it. You worked out the puzzle, meaning you solved a problem or found a solution. Work out can also mean to exercise, like doing space yoga to stay fit. Oh, I get it. So if I figure out a math problem, I worked it out. And I work out when I play soccer. Exactly, Sarah. Now let's move on to ask around. Suppose you've lost a special alien pet on a space station. You start asking various aliens if they've seen it. Ask around means to ask many people the same question to find information. Like asking all my friends if they've seen my missing notebook. That makes sense. Perfect. Next is back up. Imagine you're piloting a spacecraft and you're about to land on a new planet, but you realize the landing spot is not safe. You decide to back up the spacecraft to find a better spot. Back up means to move backward, but it can also mean to support someone or make a copy of data for safety. So if I support my friend's idea, I back her up and I back up my photos on my computer. Cool. You've got it. Lastly, we have carry on. Let's say you're on a long journey through the galaxy facing many challenges. Despite the difficulties, you continue with your mission. To carry on means to continue doing something despite difficulties. That's like carrying on with my homework even when it's hard. I'll remember that. Exactly, Sarah. You're doing an outstanding job understanding these phrasal verbs. They can be tricky, but you're mastering them quickly. Thanks, Mr. Davis. Your stories make them so much easier to remember. I'm starting to enjoy phrasal verbs. I'm thrilled to hear that, Sarah. Learning can be a great adventure. Keep up the enthusiasm and you'll continue to excel. Ready for more adventures in our next lesson? Absolutely, Mr. Davis. I can't wait. See you next time. See you next time, Sarah. Keep practicing and remember, the world of English is vast and full of discoveries. Hi, Lisa. I have great news. Really? Tell me, Mike. I decided to work out every morning. It's fun. Work out? Like exercise? Yes. I run and lift weights. It makes me feel good. That's awesome, Mike. I should start working out, too. You should. It's important for health. But I don't know where to start. Just ask around. Many people can give advice. Ask around? You mean ask other people? Yes, exactly. Friends can help. I'll ask my friends, then. Good idea. Also, I need your help. Sure. What do you need? Can you back up my files? My computer is slow. Back up your files? 
Like make a copy? Yes. I'm worried I might lose them. No problem. I can do that. Thank you, Lisa. You're a great friend. You're welcome, Mike. It's easy. What are you doing later? I'm going to the library. Oh, can I come with you? Of course. We can study together. I need to find a book. What book? A book about plants for my class. Let's carry on this talk at the library. Carry on? Continue talking? Yes, we can talk more there. Great. I love talking with you. Me too, Mike. You're funny. Thanks, Lisa. Let's go then. Let's go. The library is nice. I agree. Lots of books. And it's quiet and calm. Yes, perfect for reading. We can find your plant book. And you can help me with it. Of course. I like plants too. Really? That's cool. Yes, plants are interesting. We have a lot in common. Yes, we do, Mike. I'm glad we're friends. Me too, Mike. Best friends. Best friends. Let's go now. Yes, let's go learn something new. Let's switch things up today, Sarah, and explore some phrasal verbs with a different theme. How about a magical kingdom? That sounds fun, Mr. Davis. Let's do it. First on our list is check in. Imagine you're a knight arriving at a grand castle for a tournament. Upon arrival, you go to the registration table to check in, meaning you report your arrival and confirm your participation in the event. So it's like when we arrive at a hotel and go to the front desk to let them know we're there. Got it. Exactly. Next, we have come up with. Picture yourself as a wizard in a group tasked with protecting the kingdom. You face a difficult challenge and you need a clever solution. After thinking deeply, you come up with a brilliant spell to save the day, meaning you invent or think of a solution or plan. Like coming up with an idea for a school project. I love that. Perfect understanding, Sarah. Now let's talk about dig in. Imagine a grand feast in the castle after a victorious battle. The king announces, let's dig in, which means to start eating eagerly. It can also mean to start working hard on a task. So when my mom serves dinner and says, dig in, it's our cue to start eating. That's a tasty phrasal verb. Indeed, it is. Finally, we have dress up. Suppose there's a royal ball where everyone is expected to wear their finest attire. You decide to dress up in your most elegant outfit, meaning you wear special or formal clothes for the occasion. Like dressing up for Halloween or a fancy party. That's fun to imagine. You've got it, Sarah. By imagining these scenarios, you're building a strong foundation for understanding and remembering phrasal verbs. How do you feel about today's Magical Kingdom theme? It's so much fun, Mr. Davis. I think the different themes help me remember the phrasal verbs better. I'm excited to learn more. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. Mixing up the themes keeps our lessons engaging and helps with memorization. You're doing a fantastic job. Keep up the great work and we'll explore more phrasal verbs in our next magical lesson. I can't wait, Mr. Davis. Thank you for making learning so enjoyable. See you next time. You're welcome, Sarah. Remember, learning is an adventure and you're on a wonderful journey. See you in our next lesson for more exciting explorations. Hey, Jamie, how are you? Hi, Alex. I'm good. Just busy with work. You? I'm fine. Thanks. Just wanted to check in with you. Check in? Like, see how I'm doing? Exactly. I wanted to make sure you're okay. That's sweet of you, Alex. I appreciate it. No problem. So what's new with you? Well, I need to come up with a new recipe. Come up with? You mean create? Yes, create a new dish for the restaurant. 
That sounds exciting. Any ideas? Not yet. I'm still thinking. I can help if you want. Really? That would be great. Let's dig in then. Where do we start? Dig in? Like start working? Yes. Let's start brainstorming recipes. Okay. How about a pasta dish? Pasta sounds good. Maybe with a unique sauce? I like that idea. Maybe something spicy? Spicy is good. It's popular. Thanks, Alex. You're really helping. Always happy to help, Jamie. Oh, did you hear about the costume party? Costume party? No, I haven't. There's a big one next weekend. That sounds fun. Yes, but I need to dress up. Dress up? Like in a costume? Exactly, but I don't know what to wear. I can help you with that, too. You're amazing, Alex. What about a superhero costume? Superhero? That's a cool idea. Everyone loves superheroes. True. Maybe I'll be a superhero chef. That's perfect. Chef by day, hero by night. I love it. Thanks, Alex. No problem. It'll be fun. I'm excited now. This will be great. It will be. I can't wait to see it. And thanks for helping with the recipe. Of course. Let's make the best dish ever. With your help, it's possible. Let's work on it together. Sounds like a plan. Great. We're a good team. The best team, Alex. Let's do this. Ready for the challenge. Ready as I'll ever be. Today, let's ground our phrasal verb adventure in the real world with some practical examples. Are you ready, Sarah? Yes, Mr. Davis. Real-life examples sound great. Let's start with figure out. Imagine you're trying to solve a difficult math problem. After thinking about it for a while, you finally understand how to solve it. To figure out, something means to understand it after considering or solving a problem. So, when I finally understand how to use a new app on my phone, I figured it out. That's really relatable. Exactly right. Next, we have give in. Think about a time when you and your friends can't decide where to eat. You really want pizza, but everyone else wants sushi. Eventually, you agree to go for sushi. To give in means to stop resisting or to agree to something after initially resisting. That happens a lot with my brother. Sometimes I just give in and let him choose the TV show. That's a perfect example of using give in in everyday life. Now let's discuss hang out. Imagine you're spending time with your friends at a park or at someone's house, just relaxing and enjoying each other's company. To hang out means to spend leisure time with people. I love hanging out with my friends at the mall. It's always a good time. Hanging out is indeed a great way to bond with friends. Finally, we have iron out. Let's say you're planning a group project and there are many small disagreements about how to proceed. Together, you discuss and resolve these issues. To iron out, something means to remove problems or find solutions to disagreements. Like when we had to iron out the details for our school fundraiser. It makes sense now. You've got it, Sarah. Today's real-life examples should help you see how these phrasal verbs are used in everyday contexts. How do you feel about them now? These examples really help, Mr. Davis. Using real-life situations makes the phrasal verbs easier to remember and understand. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. It's important to connect what we learn with real-world applications. Keep practicing, and soon these phrasal verbs will become a natural part of your vocabulary. Ready for more learning adventures? Definitely, Mr. Davis. Thanks for making English so accessible and fun. I'm looking forward to our next lesson. You're welcome, Sarah. Your enthusiasm makes teaching a joy. See you next time for more explorations into the English language. Hey, Taylor, what are you up to? Hi, Sam. Just trying to figure out my math homework. Figure out? You mean solve? 
Yes, exactly. It's a bit confusing. Need some help with it? That would be great, thanks. No problem. Let's see what you have. I appreciate it, Sam. I was about to give in. Give in? You mean give up? Yes, I was almost ready to stop trying. Don't worry, we'll work it out together. You're a lifesaver, Sam. After we finish, want to hang out? Hang out? Like spend time together? Yeah, maybe go to the park or something. That sounds fun. I'd love to. Great. It's a beautiful day outside. It's perfect for a walk. Exactly. We can relax after your homework. I can't wait. It will be nice to take a break. Definitely. Oh, by the way, did you hear about the club meeting? The one next week? No. What's up? They need to iron out some details for the event. Iron out? You mean sort out problems? Yes, there are a few things they need to fix. I hope they manage it. The event sounds exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Thanks for telling me. No problem. We should help if they need it. Agreed. It's good to be involved. For sure. It makes things more fun. Definitely. I'm glad we're both in the club. Me too. It's a great group of people. And we get to do cool stuff. Exactly. There's always something interesting. Now, back to this math problem. Right. Let's figure it out. With your help, I'm sure we can. We'll crack it in no time. Then off to the park. Sounds like a plan. Let's dive into another set of phrasal verbs with real-life scenarios, Sarah. Ready to jump in? Absolutely, Mr. Davis. I'm eager to learn more. Speaking of jump in, that's our first phrasal verb. Imagine you're at a brainstorming session for a community project and you suddenly have a great idea. You decide to quickly contribute your idea to the discussion. To jump in means to start doing something with enthusiasm or to enter a conversation or activity already in progress. So when I have an idea for our group project, I can just jump in and share it. Got it. Exactly. Now let's talk about keep up. Suppose you're learning to play a new sport and it's a bit challenging. Your coach encourages you to keep up with the training, meaning to continue to do something at the same pace or level as others, or to manage to understand or deal with something that is happening. That's like trying to keep up with the homework assignments in class, making sure I don't fall behind. Precisely, Sarah. Moving on to lay off. Imagine a company is facing financial difficulties and cannot afford to pay all its employees. Unfortunately, they decide to lay off some workers, meaning to stop employing them, often temporarily because there is not enough work to do. That's sad. So when people say they were laid off, it means they lost their job for reasons like that. That's correct, Sarah. It's a tough situation. Lastly, we have look into. Let's say you hear about a new club at school that seems interesting. You decide to look into it, meaning you start investigating or trying to get more information about it. Like when I heard about the photography club and started looking into how to join. I understand now. You've done a great job today, Sarah. These real-life examples are designed to help you see how phrasal verbs are used in everyday speech. Do you feel more comfortable with them now? Yes, Mr. Davis. These examples really help make the phrasal verbs clearer. I'm starting to recognize them when I read or hear them, too. That's fantastic to hear, Sarah. The more you use and recognize these phrasal verbs, the more natural your English will become. Keep up the good work and don't hesitate to jump in with questions anytime. Ready for our next lesson? Definitely ready, Mr. Davis. Thanks for all the help. I'm looking forward to learning even more. You're very welcome, Sarah. Your progress is impressive and I'm here to support your learning journey. See you next time for more engaging lessons.
Hey, Emily, you look busy. What's up? Hi, David. I'm just trying to keep up with all my work. Keep up? You mean stay on track? Exactly. There's so much to do. I understand. Can I help in any way? I appreciate it, but it's okay. I'll manage. If you're sure, just don't overdo it. I'll try not to. What about you? I'm actually about to jump in on a new project. Jump in? You mean start working on it? Yes, it's a new marketing campaign. That sounds exciting. It is. I love new challenges. I can tell. You always seem so energetic. Thanks, Emily. I try to be. You're welcome. Oh, did you hear about the gym? No. What about it? They're planning to lay off some staff. Lay off? You mean let them go? Yes, unfortunately. Budget cuts, they said. That's sad news. I hope everyone finds something soon. Me too. I was thinking of looking into it. Looking into? You mean investigating? Yes, maybe there's a way to help them. That's thoughtful of you, Emily. It's important to support each other. Absolutely. Let me know if I can assist. I will, David. Thanks. No problem. So taking a break later? I should. Maybe a quick walk. That's a good idea. Fresh air helps. Yes, it's refreshing and clears my mind. Do you want some company? Sure, that would be nice. Great. It's settled then. Thanks, David. I'm looking forward to it. Me too, Emily. It's always nice talking to you. Same here. You make work more fun. I'm glad I can help lighten the mood. You definitely do. Let's wrap up our work then. Yes, let's. The walk will be a nice break. Agreed. See you in a bit. See you, David. Let's continue our exploration of phrasal verbs with some more real-life examples, Sarah. Are you ready? Yes, Mr. Davis. I'm ready to learn more. Wonderful. First up, we have move on. Imagine you've been working on a difficult problem for a while without any success. You decide it's best to focus your efforts on a different task. To move on means to leave something behind and start something new, either to avoid dwelling on the past or to progress to the next thing. So if I can't solve a math problem, it's okay to move on to the next one and come back to it later. That's helpful. Exactly, Sarah. It's important to know when to shift your focus. Next, we have open up. Think about a friend who is usually very shy and doesn't talk much about their feelings. One day, they start to share more about their life and feelings with you. They open up, meaning they become more willing to talk about personal things. That's like when my cousin started to open up to me during our summer vacation. We became much closer after that. That's a perfect example of opening up, Sarah. Now, let's discuss pick up. Imagine you're walking home and see a piece of trash on the sidewalk. You decide to pick it up and throw it in a bin. Pick up can mean to lift something from the ground, but it can also mean to learn something new, often without formal lessons, or to start something again after a pause. Oh, I picked up some Spanish from my friend before our trip to Spain. I get it now. Well done, Sarah. Picking up new skills or hobbies can be very rewarding. Lastly, we have ring up. In a store, when you're ready to buy something, the cashier will ring up your items, meaning they scan them to calculate the total cost. So, when I'm at the checkout, the cashier rings up my groceries. Makes sense. You've got it, Sarah. These everyday examples should help you understand how phrasal verbs are used in various contexts. How do you feel about them now? Much better, Mr. Davis. Seeing how they fit into real-life situations makes them easier to remember. I'm excited to use them more confidently. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. Your enthusiasm and willingness to learn are the keys to your success. Keep practicing, and soon these phrasal verbs will become second nature to you. Ready to tackle more in our next session? Absolutely, Mr. Davis. 
Thank you for all the explanations. I'm looking forward to our next lesson. You're welcome, Sarah. It's a pleasure to teach someone as eager to learn as you are. See you next time for more learning adventures. Hey Jordan, have you seen the email about the new underwater robotics project? Yeah, I just read it. Looks like it's time for us to move on from the routine tasks and dive into something more exciting. Exactly my thoughts. I'm considering volunteering to lead it. What do you think? I'm all in. I've always wanted to pick up some skills in marine engineering. Plus, working on underwater robotics sounds like a real adventure. I knew you'd be interested. I'll ring up the project coordinator and express our interest. They're looking for a dynamic team. Great. This project could really open up new possibilities for our department. Imagine the applications in marine biology, oceanography, even deep sea rescue missions. It's a groundbreaking field, but you know, it's not just about the technology. We also need to move on to thinking about environmental impacts, sustainability, Absolutely. The ocean's ecosystems are delicate. Whatever we develop has to respect that balance. I agree. It's time we open up our approach to tech development, considering the broader ecological implications. Speaking of which, I read about this new AI system designed to minimize environmental disruption. We could pick up a few ideas from there. That's a good lead. Let's ring up the authors of that study. Maybe they can provide some insights or even collaborate with us. I'll draft an email. Also, considering the unusual nature of this project, do you think we should pick up some additional training? Maybe a course in marine sciences? Definitely. Understanding the marine environment is crucial. We can't just move on with our usual tech knowledge. We need a deeper understanding of the ocean. Agreed. I'll look into courses and maybe some recent publications that could help. Learning more about the ocean's biodiversity would really open up our perspective. And while we're at it, let's pick up some basic scuba training. If we're going to work on underwater robotics, we might as well experience the environment firsthand. That's an exciting idea. Scuba diving would definitely give us a unique view of our project's potential impact. I'll ring up a few diving schools and see what options we have. Maybe we can arrange a team building dive. Perfect. This is really starting to shape up. You know, it's refreshing to move on to a project that's not just about profit or efficiency, but has real world environmental significance. I agree. It's a chance to open up our work to bigger questions about technology and its place in the natural world. And on a personal level, it's a great opportunity to pick up new skills and knowledge. It's not every day you get to work on something that could revolutionize our understanding of the deep sea. True. Let's make sure we move on with a strong, interdisciplinary approach. We need to think about software, hardware, environmental science, even ethics and policy. Absolutely. By the way, should we ring up some experts from other departments? Maybe someone from environmental science or marine biology. That's a brilliant idea. A collaborative approach will definitely open up more comprehensive solutions. I'll reach out to a few colleagues and set up a brainstorming session. This is turning out to be more than just a project. It's like we're charting new territory. It is. And as we pick up momentum, we'll need to be mindful of the challenges ahead. But for now, let's focus on getting the right people on board and setting a solid foundation. Agreed. It's exciting to move on to a project like this. It's not just about building something, it's about exploring new frontiers. Exactly. Let's ring up those contacts, schedule some meetings, and get this project off the ground. We have a lot to learn and even more to discover. Let's dive into another set of phrasal verbs, Sarah. I'll give you real-life scenarios to help you understand each one better. That sounds great, Mr. Davis. I'm ready. 
First, we have show up. Imagine you've planned a study group with friends at the library. You arrive on time, and slowly, all your friends start to arrive as well. To show up means to arrive or appear at a place, especially if there was some doubt about whether the person would arrive. So, if I tell my friend I'll show up at their party, it means I'll definitely be there. Got it. Exactly, Sarah. Next is stand by. Think about a situation where your best friend is having a disagreement with someone else. You believe in your friend's perspective, so you stand by them, meaning you support them and remain loyal even in difficult times. That's important. Standing by your friends means you're there for them no matter what. Right you are. Now let's talk about take up. Suppose you've always been interested in painting but never tried it. One day, you decide to start learning how to paint. To take up something means to begin a new hobby or interest. I've been thinking about taking up yoga. That would mean I'm starting it as a new activity, right? That's the perfect application of take up, Sarah. Lastly, we have back off. Imagine you're in a debate and the discussion becomes a bit heated. You realize it's best to calm the situation, so you decide to reduce the intensity of your argument. To back off means to stop being aggressive or to give someone more space or freedom. Like when I see my brother getting frustrated with his game, I back off and let him cool down. That makes sense. You've understood perfectly, Sarah. These scenarios should help you grasp how these phrasal verbs are used in everyday conversations and situations. How do you feel about them now? These examples really help, Mr. Davis. I can see how these phrasal verbs fit into real conversations. I'm feeling more confident about using them. That's wonderful to hear, Sarah. Your ability to understand and apply these phrasal verbs is impressive. Keep practicing, and you'll find them becoming a natural part of your vocabulary. Ready for more lessons? Yes, I'm looking forward to learning even more. Thanks for making these lessons so engaging, Mr. Davis. You're very welcome, Sarah. Your enthusiasm makes teaching a joy. I'm excited for our next session together. Keep up the great work. Hey, Riley, did you see the new intern didn't show up today? Yeah, I noticed. I hope everything's okay. It's not like her to miss her first day. True. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about the Henderson Project. We've got a lot to take up this week. Oh, right. I've been meaning to discuss that. I think we should back off a bit on the marketing side. The budget is getting tight. That's a fair point. But we can't back off too much, or we'll lose momentum. Maybe we can reallocate some resources from other areas? Perhaps. Let's stand by our initial strategy for now, but keep a close eye on expenses. Agreed. By the way, I heard that the client is expecting some preliminary results by Friday. We really need to make sure everyone shows up on time and stays focused. Definitely. I'll send out a reminder to the team. Speaking of the team, have you heard from Alex about the software update? Not yet. I'll ring him up later. He promised to stand by for any troubleshooting during the update. Good. We can't afford any delays. Also, regarding the intern, should we take up the matter with HR? Let's wait until tomorrow. If she doesn't show up again, we'll need to address it. Sounds reasonable. Oh, and regarding the budget, I think we might need to take up some cost-saving measures soon. Agreed. Let's brainstorm some ideas. We can't just stand by and watch the budget spiral out of control. Right. Also, I've been thinking we should take up the issue of team workload in the next meeting. Some people are getting overwhelmed. That's a good point. We need to balance things better. We can't just stand by and watch our team get burned out. Exactly. And about the Henderson Project, I think we need to back off on some of our initial ideas. They're good, but maybe too ambitious given our current resources. Maybe you're right. Let's not back off entirely, but maybe scale down a bit. 
it's important to stay realistic. True. And remember, if Alex's software update doesn't go well, we need to stand by our decision to upgrade. We can't just back off because of a few hiccups. I agree. We've committed to this path and we need to stand by our choices. But let's also be ready to adapt if necessary. Absolutely. Flexibility is key. Oh, and one more thing about the intern. If she does show up tomorrow, we should probably take up her absence in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, just to understand what happened. Definitely. It's important to show up understanding and support, especially for new team members. Right. We've all been there. It's tough starting out. Anyway, I think we have a solid plan for the week. Let's just hope everything shows up according to plan. Agreed. And let's not forget to back off a bit on the pressure. We want to maintain a positive and productive work environment. Absolutely. A little understanding goes a long way. Thanks for the chat, Sam. I feel better about how to take up these challenges now. Anytime, Riley. It's always good to talk things through and stand by each other as a team. Let's take up these issues and make it a successful week. Let's tackle a new set of phrasal verbs, Sarah. I'll continue with real-life scenarios to make them easier to understand. Sounds good, Mr. Davis. I'm ready to learn. First up is blow up. Imagine you're at a science fair, and one of the experiments involves a chemical reaction that suddenly expands and creates a big spectacle. To blow up can mean to explode or to suddenly become very angry but it can also mean to increase something in size, like inflating a balloon. So, if someone says, he's going to blow up when he hears this news, it means they're going to be really angry? Precisely, Sarah. Next, we have bring about. Think of a situation where a new mayor is elected with the promise of improving public parks. Through their efforts, these changes happen. To bring about something means to cause it to happen. Like, the new policy brought about positive changes in the community. I get it now. Exactly. Now let's move on to call for. Suppose the weather forecast predicts a lot of rain for tomorrow. The situation calls for an umbrella, meaning it requires or necessitates one. So if a recipe calls for sugar, it means I need to use sugar in it. That's useful. Right on target. Lastly, we have carry out. Imagine a group project where you're assigned specific tasks. You're expected to carry out your task, meaning to perform or execute it as planned. That's like carrying out a plan. If we plan a surprise party, we need to carry out all the steps to keep it a surprise. You've got it, Sarah. Your understanding of these phrasal verbs is excellent. These real-life examples should help solidify your grasp on how they're used in everyday language. How do you feel about these new additions? I feel much more confident, Mr. Davis. Your examples really help make the meanings clear. I'm starting to notice these phrasal verbs in conversations and books, too. That's fantastic, Sarah. Noticing them in real life is a great sign that you're internalizing what you've learned. Keep listening and practicing, and you'll master them in no time. Ready for more challenges? Definitely, Mr. Davis. Thanks for all the help. I'm excited to keep learning. You're welcome, Sarah. Your enthusiasm is infectious, and I look forward to our next lesson. Keep up the great work. Hey, Max, did you hear about the new initiative our company is planning to carry out? I caught a bit of it in the morning meeting. Something about sustainable energy, right? Exactly. They want to bring about significant changes in how we manage our energy resources. That sounds ambitious. Sustainable energy has always been a tricky field to navigate. It is, but it's also necessary. With climate change blowing up as a major concern worldwide, it's high time companies like ours took a stand. True. 
Do you know what specific plans they have in mind to carry out this initiative? They're starting with solar panels for all our offices. Also, there's talk about investing in wind energy. That's a bold move. It'll definitely bring about a change in the company's public image, too. Absolutely. There's also a proposal to call for a reduction in overall energy consumption by 20% within the next two years. That's a hefty goal. How do they plan to carry that out? It involves a mix of cutting down on non-essential energy use and upgrading to more efficient technologies. Sounds like a plan. I heard there was some disagreement in the board meeting. Did that blow up into anything serious? Not really. There were concerns about the costs, but everyone agrees that the long-term benefits are worth it. I'm glad to hear that. It's time companies started to bring about real change instead of just talking about it. Exactly. Oh, and there's also a community outreach program that's part of the initiative. They want to call for volunteers from our team. Count me in. It's a good chance to bring about awareness in the community. I thought you'd be interested. They're planning workshops and seminars to educate local schools and businesses about sustainable practices. That's a great way to carry out our responsibility towards the community. What about internal measures? Anything we need to do differently at the office? For starters, we're going to bring about a new policy for waste management, recycling, composting, that sort of thing. It's about time. We've been too lax with our waste. It might call for some adjustments, but it's necessary. Definitely. And about the energy reduction target, they're going to call for department-wise energy audits. Makes sense. Keep track of where and how we can cut down. Yeah. Also, on a lighter note, did you hear about the charity event next month? The one our PR team is planning to carry out? I heard something about it. Isn't it some sort of marathon? Yes, and it's blowing up on social media. A lot of external companies are showing interest in participating. That's good publicity for a good cause. Count me in for that, too. Will do. It's heartening to see our company not just bring about change internally, but also reaching out to the community. Absolutely. It's a holistic approach. Change isn't just about what happens inside the office walls. It's about how we influence and engage with the world outside. Right. I think these initiatives are really going to blow up in a good way. It shows we're serious about making a difference. Agreed. It's a collective effort, though. Each of us has a role in carrying out these changes, both big and small. That's true. It all adds up. Well, I better get back to work. Got to bring about those reports before the end of the day. Same here. Let's catch up later and maybe brainstorm some ideas on how our department can contribute more effectively. Sounds like a plan. See you later, Max. Let's continue expanding your phrasal verb repertoire with some more real-life examples, Sarah. Ready to dive in? Yes, I'm ready, Mr. Davis. Great. First, we have come down with. Imagine you start feeling unwell, showing symptoms like a cough or a fever. You're beginning to come down with something, which means to start to suffer from an illness. So if I start sneezing a lot, I might say, I think I'm coming down with a cold. I see. Exactly right. Next is cut down on. Let's say you've been drinking a lot of soda lately and you decide it's not healthy. You choose to drink less soda. To cut down on something means to reduce the amount you consume or use. That's like me trying to cut down on screen time before bed. Makes sense, Mr. Davis. Perfect example, Sarah. Reducing screen time is a great way to improve sleep quality. Now let's talk about do-over. Imagine you're working on a painting, but it doesn't turn out the way you wanted. You decide to start again from scratch. To do over means to redo something, usually because you weren't satisfied with the first attempt. Like when I had to do my science project over because the experiment didn't work the first time. That's right, Sarah. Doing something over gives you a chance to improve on your previous attempt. 
Lastly, we have drop by. Suppose a friend lives nearby and you decide to visit them without a formal invitation. To drop by means to make a short, casual visit. Oh, I drop by my grandma's house sometimes after school. It's always a nice surprise for her. Dropping by someone's place can indeed be a pleasant surprise. You're doing an excellent job understanding these phrasal verbs, Sarah. Each one adds a layer of nuance to your conversations and writing. How are you feeling about them now? I'm feeling really good about them, Mr. Davis. Your explanations with real-life examples make them so much easier to understand and remember. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. The more you use and recognize these phrasal verbs in context, the more naturally they'll come to you. Keep practicing and don't hesitate to experiment with them in your daily conversations. Ready for more learning adventures? Absolutely, Mr. Davis. Thanks for making English so interesting. I'm looking forward to our next lesson. You're very welcome, Sarah. Your eagerness to learn makes teaching a joy. I look forward to our next session, too. Keep up the great work. Hey, Taylor, you look a bit under the weather. What's up? Yeah, I think I've come down with something. Maybe the flu. I just feel drained. That's rough. Have you seen a doctor yet? Not yet, but if I don't feel better by tomorrow, I'll go. Anyway, what brings you here? Just wanted to drop by and check on you. Also, I need your advice on redecorating my living room. Oh, sure. What's on your mind? Well, I tried painting one wall, but it didn't turn out as I expected. I think I need to do it over. What color did you choose? Bright yellow. I thought it would be cheerful, but it's just too much. I'm thinking of a soft blue now. Blue sounds calming. A do-over might be just what you need. Yeah. Also, I've been trying to cut down on spending, so I'm looking for budget-friendly decorating ideas. Have you thought about secondhand stores or DIY projects? They can be cost-effective and unique. That's a great idea. I'll definitely look into that. Changing topics. How's your new job going? It's good, but the commute is exhausting. I've had to cut down on my gym time because of it. That's a bummer. Maybe find something closer to home or work that you can drop by for a quick workout. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. A gym near the office might work. Speaking of health, remember to cut down on junk food while you're recovering from that flu. Definitely. I've been trying to eat healthier anyway. By the way, how did that cake recipe turn out? The one you were excited about? Oh, the cake. It was a disaster. I definitely need to do it over. I think I mixed up the sugar and salt measurements. That happens. A do-over in baking is always a learning experience. Yeah, I'll try it again this weekend. Maybe you can drop by and help me out? I'd love to. It'll be fun. And about your flu, make sure you come down with a plan to see that doctor if you don't improve. Will do. Health first, right? Absolutely. And if you need anything while you're sick, just let me know. I can easily drop by after work. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it. So, what else is new with you? Not much. Been trying to cut down on screen time in the evenings. It's hard, but I'm sleeping better. That's good. I should probably do the same, especially now that I've come down with this flu. Rest is important. Definitely. And speaking of rest, don't forget to do over your bedroom like you planned. A fresh look might be uplifting. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Maybe a new color scheme and some cozy lighting. Sounds like a plan. Let me know if you need help with the do-over. I've got some free time next weekend. That would be great. It's a date. And hey, before you leave, could you help me do over this plant arrangement? I think it needs a better spot. Sure. Let's take a look. Plants always brighten up a space. Yeah, they do. Thanks for dropping by, Jamie. It means a lot. Anytime, Taylor. Get some rest and drink lots of fluids. We'll get that cake do-over sorted out this weekend. Looking forward to it. See you then, Jamie.
Let's dive into another set of phrasal verbs, Sarah. I'll provide some scenarios to help clarify their meanings for you. I'm ready, Mr. Davis. What's first? First up, we have eat up. Imagine you've made a delicious meal, and everyone at the table enjoys it so much that they finish everything on their plates. To eat up means to consume food eagerly or completely. It can also be used metaphorically to indicate that someone fully believes or accepts something without questioning it. So, if my little brother eats up all his veggies because he thinks they'll make him grow taller overnight, he's literally eating up and figuratively believing it. Exactly, Sarah. A perfect understanding. Next is fall behind. Think about being in a race and not being able to keep pace with the other runners, thus ending up further back than them. To fall behind means to lag or be delayed in progress, whether in a race, in schoolwork, or any other activity where progress is measured. Like when I miss a few soccer practices and then fall behind the rest of the team in skills. Got it. Right. It's important to catch up to avoid falling too far behind. Now let's discuss get by. Suppose you're a student on a tight budget, managing to cover your basic expenses with just enough money. To get by means to manage to survive or live with just sufficient resources. So if I use my allowance carefully to last the whole month, I'm getting by on what I have. Precisely. It's all about making do with what you've got. Lastly, we have hold up. This one can be used in several ways. If you're telling a story and someone interrupts you, you might ask them to hold up a moment while you finish. It means to wait or pause. Hold up can also refer to something maintaining its condition or value over time. And if someone asks if my old bike is still good, I can say it holds up well, even after all these years. That's an excellent application, Sarah. You've grasped the nuances of these phrasal verbs wonderfully. They can add so much depth to your language. How do you feel about using them now? I feel a lot more confident, Mr. Davis. These real-life examples make them so much clearer. I'll try to use them more in my conversations. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. Practice is key, and you're doing fantastically. Keep experimenting with these phrasal verbs and soon they'll become a natural part of your vocabulary. Ready for our next lesson? Yes, I can't wait. Thanks for all your help, Mr. Davis. These lessons are really improving my English. You're very welcome, Sarah. Your progress is impressive and I'm here to support you every step of the way. Looking forward to our next session. Hey Dana, how's the new diet going? I heard you were trying to eat up more fruits and veggies. It's going all right, Chris. The fresh salads are really eating up my grocery budget, though. But it's worth it for the health benefits. True. Investing in health is always a good idea. Speaking of investments, did you start that online finance course you mentioned? I did, but I've started to fall behind a bit. Work has been crazy lately. I understand that. It's tough to balance work and personal development. You don't want to fall behind in either. Exactly. I'm trying to get by with studying on the weekends, but it's a challenge to catch up. Just do what you can. Sometimes, just getting by is enough. You don't have to ace everything all the time. That's a good perspective. Thanks, Chris. How about you? How's the new job holding up? It's holding up well. There's a lot to learn and the pace is fast, but... I'm enjoying it. That's great to hear. Are you managing to get by with the workload? For the most part, yes. It's a lot, but I'm managing. I just need to make sure I don't fall behind on my projects. It's all about finding that balance. Oh, have you heard from Emma lately? I heard her car broke down. Yeah, she's been struggling a bit with transportation. She's trying to get by using public transit for now. Poor thing. Commuting can be such a hassle. Hopefully, her car will be held up in the shop for not too long. Yeah, she's hoping it won't eat up too much of her savings to fix it. 
Speaking of money, I'm planning a garage sale next weekend to cut down on clutter. You should come by. That's a good idea. A garage sale might help Emma too, especially if car repairs eat up her budget. True. I'll tell her about it. Maybe she can sell a few things to get by until her car situation is sorted. Good thinking. And hey, if you need help setting it up, I can drop by on Saturday morning. That would be great, thanks. Changing topics, have you decided if you're going to the reunion next month? I'm still on the fence. Work might hold up my plans. I don't want to fall behind on my tasks. Understandable. Don't let the fear of falling behind hold up your decision, though. It could be fun. True. I'll think it over. How about you? Are you going? I'm leaning towards yes. It'll be nice to catch up with everyone. Plus, I don't want to fall behind on the latest gossip. Haha, ha. that's a good reason. Speaking of catching up, how's your painting hobby holding up? It's going well. I've been trying to get by with the supplies I have, but I might splurge on some new paints soon. That sounds like a good investment. Your art has really been impressive lately. Thanks, Chris. It's a nice way to relax and not think about work or falling behind on other things. Definitely. We all need something that helps us get by the stresses of daily life. Absolutely. Oh, and don't forget about the community potluck next Friday. Make sure your work doesn't hold up your cooking skills. I won't. I'm planning to whip up my famous chili. It's always a hit. Can't wait to try it. Let's hope it doesn't eat up all my calorie allowance for the day. It might, but it'll be worth it. Anyway, I should head off. I've got a report to finish so I don't fall behind at work. All right. Take care, Chris. Thanks for stopping by, and let me know if you need any help with the garage sale setup. Will do. Take care, Dana, and good luck with your course. Remember, just getting by is sometimes all you need. Let's explore another set of phrasal verbs with examples from everyday life. This should help you understand and remember their uses more clearly. I'm ready, Mr. Davis. What's the first one? The first phrasal verb is kick in. It can be used in several contexts. For example, imagine you've taken medicine for a headache. After a while, you start to feel better because the medicine begins to kick in meaning it starts to take effect. Another context is when everyone at a group dinner contributes money for the bill, and it's your turn to kick in your share of the cost. So, if I say, the air conditioning kicks in when it gets too hot, it means it starts working at that point? Exactly, Sarah. You've got it. Next, we have look forward to. This phrase is used to express excitement about something that is going to happen. For instance, if you're planning a trip during your school vacation, you might say, I'm looking forward to our trip next month. I always look forward to the weekend so I can relax. Like that? Perfect. It shows anticipation and excitement about something in the future. Now let's talk about make out. It can mean to understand or discern something, often with some difficulty. For example, if you're trying to read a handwritten note with poor handwriting, you might say, I can barely make out what this note says. In a different context, make out can also refer to engaging in kissing or more intimate acts, usually in a private setting. Oh, I see. So, if I'm watching a movie and can't hear the dialogue well, I could say, I can't make out what they're saying. That's right, Sarah. It's all about context. Lastly, we have pass away. This is a more gentle way of saying that someone has died. It's often used to soften the impact of the news. For example, you might hear someone say, my grandmother passed away last night. That sounds much softer than saying died. I understand. Yes, it's a way to convey the message with sensitivity. You're doing an excellent job understanding these phrasal verbs, Sarah. Each one enriches your ability to express ideas more precisely and sensitively. How are you feeling about them? 
much more confident, Mr. Davis. Your explanations make them clear, and I can see how they fit into different parts of life. Thank you. You're welcome, Sarah. I'm pleased to see your progress and enthusiasm. Keep practicing and don't hesitate to use these phrasal verbs in your conversations. Ready to continue our journey in the next lesson? Definitely. I'm looking forward to learning more. Thanks for all your help, Mr. Davis. It's my pleasure, Sarah. Your eagerness to learn makes teaching very rewarding. See you in our next lesson for more discoveries. Hey, Jordan, how have you been holding up since your grandmother passed away? It's been tough, Alex. She was a huge part of my life. But I'm getting by, thanks. I'm here if you need anything. Did the inheritance she left you kick in yet? Yes, it did. It's a strange feeling, benefiting from someone's passing. She always wanted me to use it for my education. She'd be proud of you. Speaking of which, how's your thesis going? It's going well. I'm actually looking forward to presenting it next month. Grandma always encouraged my studies. That's great to hear. She really had a huge impact on you. Definitely. Changing topics. How did your date go last night? Were you able to make out what she was like? It went well. We really connected. She's funny, smart, and we share a lot of common interests. I'm looking forward to seeing her again. It's good to see you excited about someone. Yeah, it's been a while since I felt this way. So, any plans for the weekend? Not much. Just some quiet time at home. Still, I'm looking forward to catching up on some reading. Sounds peaceful. Hey, have you heard from the volunteer group lately? Yes, they said the new project should kick in next week. We'll be helping out at the local shelter. That's good. Volunteering always seems to bring you a sense of peace. It does. Helps me feel connected and useful, you know? Absolutely. Oh, did you make out what was wrong with your car? You mentioned it was acting up. Turns out it was just a minor issue. Got it fixed without much trouble. Glad to hear that. It's always something with cars, isn't it? Yeah. Speaking of fixing things, how's the renovation at your place coming along? It's going well. The kitchen should be done next week. I'm really looking forward to the new space. Must be exciting to see all your plans kick in. It is. I'll have you over once it's all done. We can have a mini housewarming party. That sounds like a blast. I'd look forward to that. It'll be good to get together. We haven't had much time since your grandmother passed away. True. It would be nice to catch up properly. Definitely. By the way, did you ever make out the meaning of that cryptic text you received last week? Oh, that. Yeah, it was just a wrong number. Nothing exciting. Happens to the best of us. On a different note, have the side effects of your new medication started to kick in yet? A little bit. I've been feeling drowsy, but the doctor said it should settle down soon. Hope it gets better. Medication adjustments can be tricky. They can, but it's for the best. How about your yoga classes? Are you still looking forward to those every week? Absolutely. They're the highlight of my week. Really helps to de-stress. Maybe I should give it a try could use something to relax. You should. It might be just what you need. I'll think about it. By the way, have you heard from Mike since he moved to Seattle? Yeah, we text now and then. He seems to be doing well, said the job's kicking in nicely. Good for him. Always knew he'd do well out there. Definitely. He was always ambitious. Well, I should get going. Gotta make out some time to visit Grandma's grave today. I understand. Take care, Jordan. Let me know if you need anything. Will do. Thanks, Alex. It's always good talking to you. Anytime, buddy. Catch up soon. Let's tackle another group of phrasal verbs, Sarah. 
I'll give you scenarios for each to illustrate their meanings clearly. Sounds good, Mr. Davis. I'm eager to learn more. Wonderful. The first phrasal verb is put off. This means to delay doing something or to postpone it. For example, if you have a project due next week but decide to start it later because you want to go to a movie, you're putting off the project. So if I don't want to clean my room today and decide to do it tomorrow, I'm putting it off? Exactly, Sarah. You've understood perfectly. Next up, we have run into. This can mean to meet someone unexpectedly. Imagine you're at a shopping mall and you suddenly see your old school friend whom you haven't seen in years. You've just run into them. That happens to me sometimes. It's always a surprise to run into someone you know by chance. It sure is, Sarah. It makes the world feel smaller. Now let's discuss settle down. This phrase can be used in several ways, but commonly it means to become stable in one's life, often by finding a steady job, getting married, or buying a house. It can also mean to calm down or to prepare to focus on something, like settling down to study for an exam. My older cousin just bought a house and got married. She's really settling down now. That's a perfect example of using settle down in the context of establishing a stable life. Finally, we have take off. In one sense, it refers to an airplane starting its flight, but it's also used to describe when something becomes very successful or popular very quickly. For example, a new smartphone app might take off if millions of people start downloading it soon after its release. Like when a video goes viral on the internet, it really takes off. Precisely, Sarah. Take off can capture that rapid rise in popularity. You've done an excellent job grasping the meanings of these phrasal verbs. They can add so much nuance to your conversations. How do you feel about them now? I feel great, Mr. Davis. Your examples really help make the meanings clear. I'm starting to see how I can use them in my own conversations. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. Your ability to understand and apply these phrasal verbs is impressive. Keep practicing, and soon they'll become a natural part of your vocabulary. Ready for more lessons? Yes, I can't wait. Thanks for making these lessons so interesting, Mr. Davis. You're welcome, Sarah. Your enthusiasm makes teaching a joy. I look forward to our next session together. Keep up the great work. Hey, Noah, you seem a bit distracted. What's on your mind? Hey, Ella. I've been thinking about my move next month. I've put off telling my landlord about leaving. Why put it off? It's better to get these things sorted sooner rather than later. I know you're right. It's just that every time I think about it, I get anxious. It's a big change, but you'll manage. By the way, did you run into Sarah at the coffee shop yesterday? I thought I saw you two. Yeah. I did. It was quite unexpected. We ended up chatting about old college days. It's funny how you run into people from your past. It is. Speaking of the past, have you heard from Mike since he moved to New York? Not much. He seems to be really busy. His career really took off after the move. That's great for him. I always thought he'd take off in a big city. Yeah. How about you? Any thoughts on when you'll settle down? Settle down? Not anytime soon. I'm enjoying the freedom too much right now. I get that. It's nice to have the flexibility. But aren't you putting off buying a house because of it? A bit, yes. But I'm not in a rush. I like where I am in life right now. That's a good way to be. Oh, did you run into any problems with your car repair? Surprisingly, no. The mechanic said it was an easy fix. I thought it would take off a chunk of my savings, but it was quite reasonable. That's a relief. Car troubles can be such a hassle. Tell me about it. Have you decided if you're going to put off your trip to Europe? I'm still undecided. Work's been hectic and I might need to put it off until things settle down a bit. Makes sense. Don't put it off too long, though. You've been talking about that trip for ages. I know. 
I need that adventure. Maybe once I settle down in my new place, I'll plan it out. Sounds like a plan. Remember, life's too short to keep putting things off. Agreed. Speaking of plans, are you still going hiking this weekend? Absolutely. Can't wait for it. The work week has been so busy, I need this break to take off and relax. You always had a knack for finding the best hiking spots. I might run into you there if I decide to join. You should. It'd be nice to catch up more. I'll think about it. How's your sister, by the way? Has she settled down after her move? She has, finally. She's loving the new city and her new job. Good for her. I hope my move goes just as smoothly. It will. Just don't put off the preparations too much. Definitely. Oh, did you run into any issues with your new project at work? A few, but nothing I couldn't handle. I had to put off a meeting to resolve them, though. Sounds like you handled it well. You've always been good under pressure. Thanks, Noah. I try my best. Speaking of handling things, have you figured out how you're going to take off time for moving? I'm planning to talk to my boss about it next week. I'll likely take off a few days before the move to pack and then a few days after to settle down in the new place. Smart. It's important to give yourself that time. Yeah. Moving can be stressful, so I want to make sure I have enough time to settle down. Absolutely. Well, I should get going. Got to run into the grocery store before it closes. All right, Ella. Thanks for the chat. It's always nice catching up with you. Anytime, Noah. Good luck with your move, and don't put off those important tasks. I won't. Take care, Ella. Let's dive into our next set of phrasal verbs, Sarah. I'll provide some practical examples to help you understand each one. I'm all ears, Mr. Davis. First up, we have turn up. This phrase can be used in a few ways, but commonly it means to arrive or appear somewhere, often unexpectedly. For example, if you lose your keys and they later turn up under a cushion, it means they have been found after being lost. It can also mean to increase the volume of something, like turning up the music. So, if I'm waiting for my friend and they finally arrive, I can say they turned up. Exactly, Sarah. Now, let's look at work on. This means to spend time trying to improve or fix something, whether it's a skill, a project, or an issue. If you're having trouble with math and you spend extra time studying to get better, you're working on your math skills. That makes sense. I've been working on my drawing skills lately. That's a great application of work on, Sarah. Keep it up. Next, we have ask out. This usually refers to inviting someone on a date. If you find someone attractive and want to spend more time with them to know them better, you might ask them out to dinner or a movie. Like when in movies, someone asks their crush to go to the prom with them? Precisely. It's all about making that invitation. Lastly, bear with. This is a request for patience. If you're explaining something complicated or if there's a delay, you might ask someone to bear with you while you get through the difficult part or solve the problem. So, if my computer is slow during a presentation, I can ask everyone to bear with me while it loads? That's the perfect situation to use bear with. You're getting really good at this, Sarah. These phrasal verbs can add a lot of color and precision to your language. How do you feel about using them now? I feel much more confident, Mr. Davis. Your examples are really helpful. I'm starting to understand how versatile phrasal verbs are. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. Your progress is impressive. Remember, practice is key. So try to use these phrasal verbs in your daily conversations. Ready for more challenges? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for being such a great teacher, Mr. Davis. You're very welcome, Sarah. Your eagerness to learn makes teaching rewarding. I'm here to help you every step of the way. See you in our next lesson.
Hey, Olivia, did that missing report ever turn up? Morning, Simon. Yes, it finally turned up under a pile of other documents. I need to work on my filing system. That's a relief. And speaking of working on things, how's the project coming along? It's progressing. I'm working on the final stages, but it's taking longer than expected. Just bear with me a bit longer. No worries. I know you're doing your best. By the way, I ran into Derek yesterday. He mentioned he was working on a new marketing strategy. Did he ask you out to discuss it? He did. We're meeting next week to brainstorm. He has some interesting ideas. Sounds good. Derek always comes up with creative solutions. He does. Oh, and did you hear about the new cafe that opened up nearby? I was thinking of asking you out to lunch there. That sounds great. I've been wanting to try it out. I heard their coffee is excellent. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, how's your coding course going? Still working on learning Python? Yeah, it's a bit challenging, but I'm getting there. Just need to bear with the learning curve. You'll get through it. You've always been quick to pick up new skills. Thanks for the encouragement. Speaking of skills, how are your painting classes? Are you still working on that landscape piece? I am. It's nearly finished. Painting really helps me unwind after a long day. That's a great way to relax. I should find something like that to work on. Definitely. A creative outlet is important. Changing topics. Did Rachel ever turn up for her appointment yesterday? She mentioned she might have to cancel. She did, but she was running late. We managed to cover everything, though. Good to hear. Rachel's usually so punctual. Must have been something important. Yeah, she got held up in traffic. By the way, have you heard from the IT department about the computer issue? Not yet. I've been asking them out for updates, but no response so far. Hopefully, they'll turn up with some answers soon. Fingers crossed. I know you need your computer working smoothly for the project. Definitely. And speaking of the project, could I ask you out for some help with the budget analysis? It's not really my strong suit. Of course I'd be happy to help. Just let me know when you're free. Thanks, Simon. How about tomorrow afternoon? Sounds good to me. We can go over it after lunch. Perfect. Oh, did you hear about the team building event next month? They're still working on the details, but it sounds exciting. I did. It's supposed to be an outdoor adventure thing, right? Yeah, like a wilderness challenge. It'll be a nice change of pace. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good for team morale. Agreed. Well, I should get back to work. I've got a lot to work on before our lunch tomorrow. All right. I'll let you get on with it. Thanks for asking me out to lunch. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. See you tomorrow, Simon. See you, Olivia, and remember, if you need anything, just ask. All right, Sarah, let's explore another set of phrasal verbs. I'll give you scenarios for each to help you grasp their meanings effectively. Ready when you are, Mr. Davis. First, we have break up. This phrase can be used in different contexts. In a relationship context, it means to end the relationship. For example, if two people decide they're better off apart, they might break up. It can also refer to dispersing a crowd or separating something into smaller pieces. So, if I hear about a couple who decided to end their relationship, I can say they broke up? Exactly, Sarah. Now, let's talk about call on. This can mean to ask someone for an answer in a classroom or meeting setting. For example, a teacher might call on students to answer questions. It can also mean to visit someone as in calling on a friend's house. Got it. Like when my teacher calls on me for an answer, I always have to be ready. That's right. Staying prepared is key. Next up is clean up. This is a straightforward one. It means to tidy or clean an area or to make oneself look neat and presentable. For instance, after a party, you might have to clean up the mess. 
like when I clean up my room before my grandparents come over. That makes sense. Perfect example, Sarah. Lastly, we have come over. This means to visit someone at their house. If you invite a friend to come over, you're asking them to visit you at your home. So, if I ask my friend to come over and watch a movie, that's using it, right? Absolutely, Sarah. You've got a solid understanding of these phrasal verbs. They're quite common in everyday English and can help you express a wide range of actions and invitations. How do you feel about them now? I feel good about them, Mr. Davis. These examples really help me understand how to use them in real life. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. You're making great progress. Remember, practice makes perfect. Try to use these phrasal verbs in your daily conversations. Ready for more learning? Yes, I can't wait. Thanks for all the help, Mr. Davis. You're welcome, Sarah. Your enthusiasm for learning is truly inspiring. I look forward to our next lesson together. Keep up the great work. Hey, Sophie, how have you been since you and Jason decided to break up? Hi, Mark. It's been tough, but I'm managing. Breaking up is never easy, but it was the right decision. I understand. It takes time to heal. If you need anything, just let me know. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Anyway, how's your week going? Busy as usual. I'm actually working on a new community project. We're going to clean up the local park this weekend. That sounds great. The park could really use a cleanup. Do you need any extra hands? Definitely. We're calling on all volunteers we can get. Would you like to join us? I'd love to. Count me in. It'll be nice to do something positive. Wonderful. I'll send you the details. By the way, I've been meaning to ask you out for coffee. Thought it might be nice to catch up properly. Coffee sounds good. I'd like that. It's been a while since we had a chance to chat. Great. I'll call on you later to fix a time. How's work been? It's been okay. A bit overwhelming with all the new projects, but I'm getting by. Remember, don't overwork yourself. You've been through a lot with the breakup and everything. I know. I'm trying to find a balance. Speaking of work, didn't you have that big presentation last week? Yeah, it went really well. Thanks for asking. The clients were impressed, so it was a relief. That's fantastic, Mark. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, and are you still planning on going to that cooking class? Yes, it starts next week. I'm looking forward to it. Cooking has always been a stress buster for me. That's a great way to unwind. I should probably pick up a hobby, too. You should. It helps, especially when you need to take your mind off things. I'll think about it. Maybe something outdoors. It'd be a good change. Definitely. And how's your sister? Didn't she just move into her new place? She did. The move went smoothly, but she's still working on setting everything up. I'm going over there this weekend to help her settle in. That's nice of you. Moving can be such a hassle. It can be. Speaking of which, how's your new apartment? Are you all settled in? Mostly. There are a few boxes I still need to unpack. Maybe you can come over sometime and see the place. I'd like that. Just let me know when you're free. Will do. And about the park cleanup, what time should I show up? We're starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday. I'll text you the details. Perfect. I'll be there. It'll be good to get out and do something worthwhile. Absolutely. It's important to stay involved in the community. It is. And it's a good distraction from everything else. True. Also, have you thought any more about adopting a pet? You mentioned wanting a dog. I have, actually. I think I'm ready for it. It'll be nice to have some company, especially after the breakup. That sounds like a great idea. A pet can bring so much joy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll probably visit the shelter next weekend. Let me know if you want company. I'd be happy to come over and help you choose. Thanks, Mark. I might just take you up on that offer. Anytime. Well, I should head off. 
Got a meeting to catch. But let's definitely plan for that coffee soon. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by, Mark. It's always good talking to you. Likewise, Sophie. Take care and I'll call on you about that coffee. Sounds good. See you at the park cleanup. Good morning, Sarah. Today, we're going to explore the world of phrasal verbs. Are you ready for a little adventure? Good morning, Mr. Davis. Yes, I'm excited. Phrasal verbs always confuse me a bit. Well, today, we're going to clear up that confusion with some fun explanations. Let's start with break down. Imagine you're driving a car in a story and suddenly it stops working. The car breaks down, but Break down can also mean when someone becomes very sad and starts to cry, or when we simplify a complex problem into smaller parts to understand it better. Oh, I see. Like, my car broke down on the way to school, or he broke down in tears, and let's break down the problem into steps. Exactly, Sarah. Now let's move on to call around. Picture yourself trying to find a unicorn for your birthday party. You might call around different magical creature shops to see if they have one. So, call around means to phone many different people or places to get information or find something. Got it. So, if I'm looking for a book, I can call around different bookstores. That's fun. Right on target. Next up, we have call off. Imagine you planned a picnic, but then it starts raining cats and dogs. You decide to cancel the picnic. In other words, you call off the picnic. Call off means to cancel something that has been planned. Ah, so if there's a soccer match and it rains, they might call off the match. Makes sense. Perfect understanding, Sarah. Lastly, we have calm down. Imagine a dragon who is very angry because someone stole his tacos. To prevent him from burning down the village, you tell him to calm down. So, calm down means to relax or become less angry or upset. I'll remember that. If my little brother is upset, I can tell him to calm down. This is actually fun, Mr. Davis. I'm glad you think so, Sarah. Phrasal verbs can be like little stories that help us remember their meanings. Great job today! Thanks, Mr. Davis. I feel much more confident about phrasal verbs now. Can't wait for our next lesson. You're welcome, Sarah. Keep up the enthusiasm and you'll master English in no time. See you next lesson. Hey there. How's it going? Hi. Not so great, actually. My car broke down on the way to work this morning. Oh, no. That's terrible. Did you call for help? Yeah, I did. I called a tow truck, and they're on their way. But it's going to take a while. Bummer. Well, while you wait, why don't we grab a coffee? There's a cafe nearby. Sure. That sounds like a good idea. I could use something to calm down. So, what were you doing when your car broke down? I was just driving to work when I heard a strange noise, and then the engine just stopped. I had to pull over. That's rough. Have you called around to find out how much it'll cost to fix? Not yet. I'm hoping it's just a small issue and won't cost too much. Yeah, fingers crossed. Anyway, changing the topic a bit, did you catch the game last night? No, I completely forgot. I was so busy with work and stuff. Well, you didn't miss much. The team played well, but the game was called off due to heavy rain in the second half. Oh, that's a shame. I was looking forward to watching it. They'll probably reschedule it, right? Yeah, they will. Hopefully, it won't rain next time. By the way, I heard there's a movie night this weekend. Are you interested? Absolutely. I could use a break from all the car troubles. What movie are they showing? I'm not sure yet, but I'll call around and find out. 
I heard it's a comedy, so it should be a good time. Great. I could use a good laugh. Thanks for letting me know. No problem. And hey, once your car is fixed, we should plan a little road trip or something. It could be a fun way to make up for today's hassle. That sounds like a fantastic idea. I hope my car doesn't break down again, though. Don't worry. We'll make sure it's in top shape before hitting the road. And if anything happens, we'll just calm down and figure it out. Haha, <laughs> deal. Thanks for cheering me up. Excellent job with the first set, Sarah. Ready to tackle a few more phrasal verbs? Definitely, Mr. Davis. What's next? Let's start with bring up. Imagine you're at a family dinner and you want to talk about going on a vacation to the moon. You decide to bring up the idea during dessert. So, bring up means to start talking about a subject. Oh, like if I want to talk about getting a new pet, I can bring it up at dinner. That's a good one. Exactly. Now let's revisit break down with a little twist. Remember, it can also mean explaining something complex in a simple way. Imagine you have a giant robot, but your friend doesn't know how it works. You break down the instructions so they can understand. It's all about making things easier to grasp. I see. So break down has more than one use. That's really useful to know. Indeed, it does. Now, on to call off, which we've discussed. But let's add a fun scenario. Imagine you've organized a space race, but there's an asteroid storm on the path. You'd have to call off the race for safety. Remember, it's all about canceling plans. Got it. Safety first, so we call off the space race. That's an easy one to remember now. Great. Lastly, we have come across. Imagine you're exploring a galaxy far, far away and stumble upon a planet made entirely of ice cream. You just came across a dessert lover's paradise. So, come across means to find something or meet someone by chance. Wow, coming across an ice cream planet would be amazing. I understand. It's like finding something unexpectedly. Perfect. You've got a fantastic grasp on these phrasal verbs, Sarah. It's all about picturing these little stories to remember their meanings. These stories make it so much easier and fun, Mr. Davis. I can't wait to come across more phrasal verbs in our lessons. And I can't wait to teach them. You're doing wonderfully, Sarah. Keep up the great work, and soon you'll be a phrasal verb expert. Thanks, Mr. Davis. I'm looking forward to it. See you in our next adventure with words. Absolutely, Sarah. See you next time for more English explorations. Hi there. I was thinking about our upcoming camping trip. Do you remember where we stored the tent? Oh, I think I brought it up to the attic last year. Let me check. Bad news. I can't find the tent. It must have gotten misplaced during the spring cleaning. Oh no, that's a bummer. We can't go camping without a tent. What should we do now? Well, we could try to call around and see if any friends have a spare tent we could borrow for the weekend. Good idea. Maybe someone has one they're not using. Let's make some calls and see what we can come across. Unfortunately, it looks like everyone we called is using their tents this weekend. Looks like our camping plans are breaking down. Ugh, what a disappointment. I was really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. But don't worry, we can always plan another weekend in the future. Maybe we should call off the camping trip this time and find something else to do. True. We could still have a nice weekend together. Any suggestions on what else we could do? How about a day trip to the beach? We could pack a picnic, enjoy the sun, and relax by the ocean. It could be a great way to salvage our weekend plans. That sounds like a fantastic idea. I'm glad you came up with an alternative. 
Let's go with the beach plan then. Great. I'll start packing the picnic basket and you can bring up the sunscreen and beach towels. All right, Sarah. Ready for another set of phrasal verbs? Yes, Mr. Davis. What are we learning today? We'll start with cut off. Imagine you're in a science fiction movie and the hero needs to stop the villain. The hero decides to cut off the power supply to the villain's lair, effectively stopping them. So cut off can mean to stop or interrupt the supply of something. It can also mean to stop someone from speaking by saying something yourself. Oh, like if I'm talking too much and my friend interrupts me, they cut me off. Got it. Precisely. Next, we have do away with. Imagine a planet where robots do all the work and the people decide they don't need to use money anymore. They do away with money, meaning they abolish it or get rid of it entirely. So, if we do away with homework, it means we won't have any more homework ever again. That would be nice. That's the spirit, though I'm sure we'll keep the homework for now to help us learn. Now, let's talk about drop off. Picture a future where flying cars are common. You're going to a friend's house and your mom drops you off in her flying car. Drop off means to take someone or something to a place and leave them there. Like when my mom drops me off at school before she goes to work. I can picture the flying car part, too. Exactly. You're getting really good at this. Lastly, eat out. Imagine living on a space station with many restaurants. Instead of cooking at home, you decide to eat out, meaning you go to a restaurant to eat. Eating out in space sounds amazing. I love going to restaurants, so that's an easy one to remember. You've done an outstanding job today, Sarah. By picturing these scenarios, you're not only learning English, but also expanding your imagination. Thanks, Mr. Davis. These phrasal verbs are really starting to make sense now. I can't wait for our next lesson. I'm glad to hear that, Sarah. Keep up the great work, and soon there'll be no phrasal verb too tricky for you to handle. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for making learning so much fun, Mr. Davis. My pleasure, Sarah. Remember, learning is an adventure, and you're doing fantastically. See you next time for more exciting explorations in English. Hey, I was thinking about dinner tonight. How about we do away with cooking and eat out instead? That sounds like a plan. I'm tired after a long day at work and I could use a break from the kitchen. Any preferences on where you'd like to eat? How about that new Italian restaurant that opened up downtown? I heard they have amazing pasta dishes. Perfect. I'm in the mood for some good pasta. Let's drop off our bags at home and we can head there straight from work. Before we dive into the menu, did you hear about the new traffic rules? They are planning to cut off the old shortcut near our neighborhood. Really? That's surprising. I always use that route to avoid traffic. How are they planning to do away with it? They say it's part of a city improvement project. They want to widen the road and make it safer, so they decided to cut off the shortcut to divert traffic to the main road. Well, that's inconvenient. I'll have to find a new way to work. Maybe I'll drop off at the office early and avoid the rush. Good idea. Anyway, let's not let traffic woes spoil our dinner. What are you thinking of ordering? I'm tempted to try their lasagna. I heard it's the chef's specialty. Sounds delicious. I might go for the spaghetti carbonara. Oh, and don't forget to ask if they have any dessert specials. That was a fantastic meal. I'm so glad we decided to eat out tonight. Me too. It was a nice break from our usual routine. By the way, do you mind if we drop off at the grocery store on the way home? We need a few things. Sure, not a problem. 
we can quickly drop off and grab whatever we need before heading home. Hello, Sarah. How's your day going? Hi, Mr. Davis. It's going well, thank you. Ready for our lesson. Fantastic. Today, let's explore scenarios that involve resolving issues and providing solutions. Imagine a customer calls because they received a damaged product and they're quite upset about it. What would you say? Um, I would say, hello, I'm sorry to hear about the damaged product and I understand your frustration. I'll make sure to address this issue for you. Could you please provide your order number and details about the damage? I'll arrange for a replacement or refund, whichever you prefer. Excellent response, Sarah. Acknowledging the frustration, expressing empathy, and offering a solution while giving the customer a choice is a great approach to handling situations involving damaged products. Now, let's switch to a different scenario. A customer calls because they are having technical issues with a product and can't figure out how to use certain features. What could you say? I would say, hello, I'm sorry to hear about the technical issues you're facing. I'll do my best to help you. Could you please describe the specific features or functions causing trouble? With that information, I can guide you through troubleshooting steps or provide additional instructions. Well done. Asking for specific details about the technical issues and offering assistance with troubleshooting is an effective way to address customer concerns. Now, let's try an exercise. Imagine a customer calls because they accidentally placed an order for the wrong product and want to cancel it. What would you say? Um, I would say, hello, I understand that you'd like to cancel your order and I'll do my best to assist you. Could you please provide your order number? Once I have that, I'll check the status and, if possible, cancel the order for you. Perfect, Sarah. Asking for the order number and expressing a commitment to assist in canceling the order is a customer-friendly way to handle situations like this. Now, let's delve into a more complex situation. A customer calls because they've been billed twice for the same service and they want a refund for the duplicate charge. What could you say? I would say, hello, I'm sorry to hear about the double billing, and I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. To resolve this, could you please provide your account or invoice number and details about the duplicate charge? I'll investigate the matter and ensure a refund is processed for you. Wonderful response, Sarah. Acknowledging the issue, expressing understanding, and committing to investigate and process a refund is a proactive approach to handling billing discrepancies. Now, let's move on to another exercise. Imagine a customer calls because they are dissatisfied with a recent service and want to discuss compensation. What would you say? Um, I would say, Hello, I'm sorry to hear that you're dissatisfied with our service, and I appreciate your feedback. I'll do my best to address your concerns. Could you please provide more details about the specific issues you encountered? Once I have a clear understanding, we can discuss possible compensation options to ensure your satisfaction. Excellent, Sarah. Acknowledging the dissatisfaction, expressing appreciation for feedback, and offering to discuss compensation while addressing specific concerns is a customer-centric approach to service recovery. Now let's explore a positive scenario. A customer calls to express their appreciation for the excellent support they received and wants to know if there are any loyalty programs or discounts available. What would you say? I would say, hello, thank you so much for your positive feedback. We're delighted to hear about your positive experience. Regarding loyalty programs or discounts, I'll check for you. Could you please provide your account or customer ID and I'll see if there are any special offers or loyalty programs you might be eligible for. Well done, Sarah. Expressing gratitude for positive feedback, checking for available discounts, and asking for the customer's account information is a thoughtful way to engage with satisfied customers.
Now let's address a more common situation. A customer calls because they received an incorrect item in their order and wants to exchange it for the right one. What would you say? I would say, hello, I'm sorry for the mix-up in your order, and I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. To facilitate the exchange, could you please provide your order number and details about the incorrect item you received? I'll arrange for the correct item to be sent to you, and we'll take care of the return process for the wrong item. Fantastic response, Sarah. Acknowledging the mistake, expressing understanding, and offering a solution by arranging an exchange while addressing the return process is a customer-friendly way to handle such issues. Now, let's venture into a more delicate scenario. A customer calls because they are unhappy with the response they received from a previous customer service representative. What would you say? I would say, Hello, I'm sorry to hear about your dissatisfaction with the previous interaction, and I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. To better understand your concerns and work towards a resolution, could you please provide details about the previous conversation and what specific issues you encountered? I'll investigate and ensure we address your concerns appropriately. Outstanding, Sarah. Acknowledging the dissatisfaction, expressing empathy, and actively working on a resolution by investigating the previous interaction is a diplomatic approach to handling customer concerns. You're navigating these scenarios with great finesse. Keep up the fantastic work. Thank you, Mr. Davis. These exercises are challenging, but I'm learning a lot about handling different customer situations. I appreciate your guidance. I'm delighted to hear that, Sarah. Dealing with various customer issues requires a nuanced approach, and you're doing exceptionally well. If you ever need more exercises or have questions, feel free to ask. Keep up the excellent work.